ever taken the time to study God's Word on the important subject of the laying on of hands? In Hebrews chapter 6, it is referred to as one of the elementary doctrines of Christ. Supernatural impartations and supernatural healings happened in the Bible through the laying on of hands. I invite you to join me for part two of The Laying On of Hands. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. And so we see here in the Bible, in the New Testament, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let him pray over them. And obviously the implication is there would be a laying on of hands. There would be a a picture of let's agree and let's believe God that he will work in this person's life. Now you say, Pastor, is it referred to in the Old Testament? Well, go with me, if you would, over the book of Deuteronomy, the very last chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 34. The successor of Moses was Joshua. Moses was not able to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. He led them out of Egypt, but not into the promised land. But God used Joshua to be his successor. But before Moses passed away, the Bible says an important event took place. And that is in Deuteronomy 34. It says in verse number 9, Deuteronomy 34 in verse 9, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But it's interesting that there is a a direct association with what was on Moses got on Joshua and the way This giftedness, this anointing, this supernatural wisdom was transferred generationally was through the laying on of hands. You see, there are certain deposits that are in one generation that need to be transferred to the succeeding generation, and the way that happens is through the laying on of hands. Do you realize you don't have to have a real formal service at your home But on a regular basis, we need to pull our children aside and we need to lay hands on them and bless them in the name of the Lord. I know a number of years ago, there was a man, a businessman that I knew, and he said one time I was praying and he said, the Lord told me everything I touch is going to be blessed. He said, I heard that one day in prayer when I was talking to the Lord. He said, you know, the Lord just said, everything you touch is going to prosper that I lead you to, obviously. The things that I lead you to, they're going to prosper. And I can still remember, whenever I would shake hands with this guy, he'd always do this kind of like, it was very obvious in his, I knew what he was doing. He was kind of like, I'm in a subtle way blessing you. I'm blessing you in the name of Jesus. I mean, we can bless a mechanic. Can I get a good amen? amen? We can bless people around us, and we just speak it in the name of Jesus. So, There's a flow that took place in the life of Joshua because Moses took the time to have a ceremony or a period of prayer where he blessed that next generation. Now, today at the end of this service, what I'd like for us to do is have a time where we invite the missionaries to come up, and they're going to take time to lay hands on you and pray over you and minister unto you. And you say, well, pastor, what's going to happen? A couple of things will happen. Number one, as we said, the Holy Spirit is going to come on you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, just like it came upon the believers at the church at Ephesus. Another thing that happens through the laying on of hands is I believe dormant gifts that are in people's lives can begin to be resurrected, to be stirred up. In other words, through the laying on of hands, there were things that were stirred up in the life of Joshua. I believe that God had foreordained this position for Joshua. God had planned it. God had ordained it. But, but yet there was something that supernatural that took place whenever Moses laid his hands on him. There was an impartation of the wisdom of God and really what he would need to be fully equipped to do God's will and God's purpose for his life. So thank God for the laying on of hands. Now I'm going to go back over to the New Testament. Now we're going to go to the book of 2 Timothy 2 Timothy, and we'll look at what happens through the laying on of hands. 
Do you remember in the Bible when it says the little children came to Jesus, Matthew 19, and Jesus laid his hands on them, and then he blessed them? Well, what happens to the laying on of hands? There's a commanded blessing. The word bless means to be empowered, to prosper. It's a picture of God's blessing. It's the opposite of a curse, but it's a picture of the fullness provision of God, God's blessing being administered into a person's life. What happens through the laying on of hands? Healing flows. The supernatural, the Holy Spirit flows. Gifts are stirred up in people's lives. But I want you to notice what Paul said to Timothy here in 2 Timothy chapter number 1. He said this in verse number 6, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. But notice he said, there was a time, Timothy, that I, the apostle Paul, laid my hands on you. And he said, I want you to stir it up in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ. You know what needs to happen? They need to get stirred up. I'm talking about you getting stirred up in the spirit realm. I'm talking about you getting stirred up and say, Lord, I'm not content to live on this lower level. When you have something higher for me, I want to be stirred up in my life. So how do you stir up the gift? There's a gift that's in you. Paul said to Timothy, yeah, there was a gift through the laying on of hands. There was an impartation, but yet things need to be stirred up in your life. So take this as a a moment in time to where you begin to say, yes, Lord, you know, I am stirring up the gift of God. So what happens through the laying on of hands? James 5, healing flows. We see it throughout the Gospels. Mark 16, healing flows. But we also see in Acts chapter 19, what happens through the laying on of hands? The Holy Spirit flows, the supernatural ministry of the Holy Spirit in In this case, people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. People spoke in other tongues, and they prophesied. And so, you know, it can happen spontaneously. But in the book of Acts, notice this. In the book of Acts, you have five different times when people are filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? You have five different events when people were filled with or baptized in the Holy Spirit. Those terms are interchangeable. And so notice this. In three of the five times that people receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, as John spoke about. Three of the five, it was when hands were laid upon them. Two times in Acts chapter 2 in the upper room at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit just poured out, and nobody laid hands on him. It was just an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts chapter 10, whenever Peter was at Cornelius' household, while he yet spake, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So we're not saying that's the only way, but we will say in the book of Acts, three out of the five times, people were filled with the Holy Spirit. They received their prayer language. They prayed in a supernatural language, the language of the Holy Spirit, and it was through the laying on of hands. Now, why am I telling you this? You know, if somebody comes up and says, yeah, will you lay hands on me? And how many know they say, okay, I'm going to lift my hands up here. I mean, uh, during the prayer, they're doing this. They've got their phone out and they're looking. If you're going to receive through the laying on of hands, how many know you need to have an expectation in your heart? See what you got to do. You got to realize when they lay their hand, forget about their hand. Think about the hands of Jesus Christ. Think about the fact that they're doing it in the name of the Lord. There are supernatural things that happen. It is an important thing that we do because we see it's a doctrine of the church. And we lay hands. You know, one of our boys wasn't sleeping well on Friday night, and, you know, I just laid next to him, and I just put my hand on him, and I just began to speak over his life and begin to pray over his life. And, you know, the more you are conscious of that, you do sense the presence of God flowing out of your hands. You do sense the power of God flowing through the laying on of hands. And so there's a transference of the power of God. There's a supernatural, supernatural transference of the power of God through the laying on of hands. So today, will you expect to receive the supernatural power of God? Will you believe healing is going to flow today? Healing flows, but at some point you got to receive it. Now that just makes sense. If I took something in the natural and I threw it at somebody, they're going to have to catch it. 
And it's the same way in the spirit realm. You reach a point where you go, Lord, I receive. And, you know, through the laying on of hands, the laying on of hands service is not a counseling service. I'm going to say a few things that might help. Hopefully they'll help. Now, how many know when you come forward for the laying on of hands and somebody says, how can I agree with you? You don't need to say, well, back in third grade, it all started in third grade. I got cut from the baseball team and spirit of rejection started then and then. It's not a counseling session. It's how can I agree with you? How can we pray? You know, I need healing. I, I'm believing for a healing. I, I need, you know, the power of God to affect a healing and a cure in me. How can I pray for you? You know, there's spiritual gifts that need to be stirred up in my life. I'm believing that gifts will be stirred up. How can I pray with you? Well, you can agree with me. I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've never prayed in the supernatural language that's referred to in the book of Acts chapter 2. I'm interested in that. You know, so you need to realize you don't have to go on and on. But you just be concise. And then here's your goal. You're receiving you're there to say, Lord, I receive in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And then after you pray for it, what do you do? You say, oh, well, I came up here with a little pain in my back, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, I, I still got that pain, Pastor. So I guess nothing happened. If you give somebody, if they got a headache, and you give them a Tylenol, and they take a Tylenol, they don't look at you 30 seconds later and say, it doesn't work. No, it didn't work. If somebody says, oh, that Tylenol doesn't work. You need to put a lawsuit on that company. That doesn't work. You know what they do? You realize, hey, it's working. It's working. That's what you begin to say. The power of God is working in me. Yeah, the power of God. Everybody say that. The power of God is working in me. Did you know that healing is not always instantaneous? Healing is a progression. People began to amend, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They were healed as they went. And so what you've got to do is stay in faith. Here's what people do. They go, I want you to pray for me. Oh, you want me to pray for you? Yeah, pray for me. Pray for me. I'll be healed. And they come up and they, they go, oh, praise the Lord. I, I want to be touched physically in my body. Pray for me. So they get prayed for and they go, woo, woo. Oh, man, I felt that. I tell you, when they pray for me, I, I, I mean, whether you feel it or not, he's still here, right? Amen. But undeniably, many times you sense the presence of God, and you go, oh, boy. And then here's what happens. The power's flowing, the power's flowing, the power's flowing, the power's flowing. And then somebody got, gets a little bitty pain or a little bitty, it, it comes back, and they go, okay, it's over with. It's done. Y'all, not only do you need to plug into the power, but you need to stay plugged into the power. And one way you stay plugged into the power is through your praise and worship. Because the devil's going to come to you and say, it's not working. It's not working. But you say, no, it is working. You wouldn't be telling me it's not working if it wasn't working. Because, see, you are the father of every lie. And so what we've got to do is begin to praise God ahead of time, begin to thank God. Thanks for joining me today. Hebrews 6 tells us that the laying on of hands is an elementary doctrine of Christ. This means that every believer should understand what the Bible teaches on this important subject. Through the laying on of hands, healing power will flow. Spiritual gifts are stirred up and blessings are imparted. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.